Osama bin Laden, I think, uh, played two roles. He was obviously a unifying symbolic figure uh, for Al-Qaeda, uh, an organization which, uh, at least since 9-11, has been transformed from a more or less hierarchical uh, structure to uh, something that uh, resembles much more a social movement, a very loose association of like-minded uh, individuals. I think his uh, death clearly is a blow uh, to any operational uh, uh, side of the, of the equation for which he was essential, but I think the more interesting question is whether or not the removal of the symbolic and charismatic figure um, will mean that the organizational structure of Al-Qaeda today, whether the removal of a symbolic charismatic figure makes that organizational form less sustainable. And I think that's the question uh, for which we don't have an answer, but I think the answer is probably yes, it makes it much more difficult to continue to have a, a coherent political movement if you don't have some sort of a charismatic figure that can serve as a, as a cohes cohesion. How can it be that uh, he could spend quite a while in the middle of a city uh, in, uh, within a few hours drive of the capital city, a city that is host to uh, uh, the most important military academy, is apparently a, a city where many former military officials retired to. It's, it's apparently quite a nice place to live in, in Pakistan. How could he be there, very exposed, as you, as you cor correctly point out, in a, in a large compound, without anyone knowing? Um, it's possible, which leads me to just assume that there uh, are elements, most probably in the Pakistani intelligence services, um, who were... Who were uh, uh, hiding him, who are collaborating with uh, with him. Well, I mean, it's clear that the uh, uh, that Pakistan has been playing uh, a number of games uh, at one time. Uh, on the one hand, uh, Pakistan is clearly interested in uh, staying on the good side of the United States uh, uh, in the uh, larger uh, context of uh, of world politics and and uh, has been successful in uh, securing a, a lot of military and uh, development assistance from Washington that they don't want to put on the line. It's also clear, however, that uh, the Pakistanis have never been particularly interested in a stable uh, Afghanistan uh, and have actually always focused on what they consider to be their primary threat, uh, that's India, and making sure that that uh, the the entirety of their of their security policies uh, serve the function of 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 keeping India uh, at bay, and so uh, uh, I think they're they're playing a number of games uh, uh, simultaneously, and that makes uh, it very difficult to to kind of. Uh, to de develop a, a, a coherent strategy for dealing with the Pakistanis because the Pakistanis themselves are not pursuing uh, one goal but a number of oftentimes conflicting goals simultaneously. And uh, a weak uh, Pakistani government makes me nervous uh, when I consider that there are uh, in the border region to uh, Afghanistan numerous armed groups who uh, are I inspired by radical Islam, uh, who are interested in toppling the government is in Islamabad. And on top of all of that, we're talking about a country that has nuclear weapons. So I mean, I, th I, think, I think the, the, the upshot of this uh, for the bilateral relationship between the United States and, and Pakistan is that the United States should be very nervous about the status of, of politics and political affairs in Afghanistan and uh, its neighbor Pakistan and uh, needs to think seriously uh, about uh, a policy for stabilizing this, uh, this region.